Good morning or good afternoon grade nines and welcome to lesson two of week two. It is wonderful to have you back for another lesson. I hope you are all well and taking good care of yourselves and let's jump in. Today we are going to be covering language structures and conventions in preparation for your Greek mythology language concepts worksheet that has been posted on your team. Key terms for this week. Adjectives, common, proper and abstract nouns. Simple present and simple past tense. Question forms, statements, discourse markers, direct and indirect speech, antonyms and synonyms, punctuation and spelling. These are all terms you are familiar with and you have engaged with them before in English. Adjectives. Adjectives are used to describe nouns and are classified into degrees of comparison. There are several types of adjectives. For example, the descriptive adjective which describes the qualities of a noun, for example, big, round, or red. You get quantitative adjectives, which describe the amount or number of the noun, for example, dozen, ten, many. You also get proper adjectives, which describes from where a noun is, for example, South African, American, or Swiss. As we mentioned earlier, adjectives can be classified into degrees of comparison. You get positive adjectives, comparative adjectives, and superlative adjectives. Examples are small, smaller, and smallest, nice, nicer, and nicest, big, bigger, biggest. Now these are regular adjectives. You also get Irregular ones, which are useful, more useful, most useful. Those ones we add more and most in front of the original word. Common, proper and abstract nouns. Common nouns are regular objects that are commonly around. Proper nouns are names of people, places or things. An abstract noun denotes an idea, quality, or state. And for the examples I've given you, a trident is a common noun, pegasus is a proper noun, and democracy is an abstract noun. Simple present tense. We use the simple present to describe facts, habits, and recurring actions or situations. Facts, for example, Evergreen trees remain green throughout the year. Habits, for example, I eat breakfast every day. Recurring actions or situations, for example, the shop closes at 5 p.m. Key time expressions for simple past tense include every, usually, sometimes, often, frequently, never, now, always, after, when, as soon as, and until, to name a few. Simple past tense. We use the simple past tense when we talk about a completed action or condition. The simple past tense usually consists of only the past tense form of the main verb, which usually ends in ed. Remember that there are many other irregular verbs that do not form the past tense, past tense by ending in ed. Key time expressions for simple past tense include last, ago, yesterday, often, sometimes, and always. Question forms. The question form in the English language is also known as the interrogative. A question asks for information or interrogates. Questions can start with auxiliary verbs. We often put the verb before the subject. This is called inversion. 
Question tags are little questions about the subject at the end of sentences. You use them when you want to find out if the person you are talking to agrees with you or not. They have a question mark at the end of the sentence. That is an easy way to identify a question. There is a question mark. Statements. A statement gives information. It is also referred to as a declarative. Statements are the most common type of sentence in English. They usually end with a full stop. And here you can see in our little infographic that there are sentences based on purpose, which include statements, questions, exclamations and commands. But for now we are focusing on statements and questions. Discourse or conversation markers. These are linking words that show how one piece of information is connected to another. There are several types, as you can see here in our table. They also have several functions, for example, adding information, showing alternatives, introducing a different idea, showing cause and effect, showing something will happen on condition, showing time, showing order, showing general statements, and emphasizing reality. And in our table, you can see the connecting words or rel relating discourse markers for each category. Direct speech. When the actual words of the speaker are reproduced, it is called direct speech. Quotation marks or inverted commas are used for direct speech. The punctuation marks at the end of direct speech are included in the quotation marks. That is important to remember. Indirect speech. When the main idea of a speaker's words is reported by another person and the exact words are not quoted, it is called indirect speech or reported speech. Quotation marks are not used for indirect or reported speech. Question marks and exclamation marks are also not used. The tense of the verb in the reported speech is in the past tense, one step further past. The pronouns are also changed in reported speech. Here are some key changes. This turns to that, these to those, here to there, now to then, tomorrow to the next or following day, yesterday, to the day before or the previous day. Synonyms and antonyms. Synonyms are words that share the same or similar meaning. For example, good or great, warm or hot. Then you have antonyms, which are words that have opposite meanings. For example, good and bad, warm and cold. And as you can see, there is a little infographic here for us reinforcing that. Punctuation and spelling. Punctuation and spelling are critical to the English language. Punctuation includes capital letters, full stops, commas, question marks, exclamation marks, apostrophes, ellipses, brackets, dashes, hyphens, and more. Spelling is just as important. Words that are spelled incorrectly can mean something different altogether. As you can see in our Snickers advert here, it says, oh dear, and they are, with the incorrect spelling, they are referring to a dear. They are not, in fact, using the exclamation, oh dear, which is spelled D-E-A-R. And there are a few more spelling errors in this advert. Hopefully, you can spot them. Thank you very much, Grade 9s. Well done on completing Lesson 2 of Week 2. Please complete the worksheet called Greek Myth Language Concepts Now in your language and comprehension books. I hope you have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson. Bye-bye.